Hi, Aquarius. Let's see how November 2019 has been treating Aquas. How has Scorpio season 2019 been treating you, Aquarius? First card out is the Magician card. And we are using the Game of Thrones tarot today. More information on decks can be found down below. Now, since we are at mid-November, we're past mid-November now as I'm recording this, um, this might just apply to the last couple of weeks of um, November 2019, but for, for others of you, it may be applicable to the entire month still. Ace of Water. Ace of Chalices there with the Magician. And this reading is, of course, for whenever it may find you and resonate, though I do intend the messages to be for, for November 2019. Uh, it may move us into de December 2019, and it is for Aquarius suns, moons, rising signs, Aquarius Venus, Mars, or um, Aquarians of any kinds. Maybe it's ruling a, pr a particular part of your chart you're very interested in. Uh, maybe you just happened upon the reading that could still mean that it has messages for you um or maybe um you just identify with um with aquarius for any reason right there is there does seem to be some aries energy on the table the second aries card out now the full card is showing up in your past so it looks like you've recently embarked upon a new beginning and currently are in the position uh, to manifest whatever you want. You have the tools that you need to manifest what you want. It <clears throat> comes hand in hand, it looks like, this brand new beginning you've embarked on with a new emotional beginning. You have a crush on someone, maybe you've fallen in love with someone new, renewed a, a, a love with someone. It is uh, Mercury retrograde still, right? I think, I believe I've heard differing um, uh, reports from, from different um, sources, but I believe that it is um, tomorrow on the 20th that Mercury actually goes direct. However, we know we still have those two couple weeks of um, the post shadow period of Mercury retrograde, right? Where, as I was just saying, in one of my other recent readings, those shadow periods, the pre and post shadow periods are actually more intense for me personally, usually when it comes to Mercury retrograde. So maybe it is a renewed love. I also know that right around this time, Aquarians, uh, Mars moved into Scorpio, right? That would have been I think that's happening today, maybe yesterday, again, differing um, reports from differing from different sources. But around this time, that Mars in Scorpio is opposing your ruling planet, Uranus, one of your ruling planets anyway, Uranus, which is, is still, of course, in Taurus. So it actually is, uh, though this reading is rather late, a very fitting day, um, in fact, for, for your November 2019 reading to, to be posted, to be done and posted, Aquarians. In the near future, you have the Knight of Fire, the Knight of Wands, Rods. He's actually the Knight of Spears in this deck. This is mystic energy speeding toward enlightenment. It is someone who's in a position to um, magnetize kindred spirits to them, to attract like-minded individuals. Your advice card is the Page of Cups. So if you've got a new love, if you've got a new crush, or you've got a renewed crush or love, right? If that's part of this emotional new beginning you are advised to make an offer regarding that emotion that love that crush whatever that might be uh, maybe it's just an opportunity for you to share openly with a lot of others 
And that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to take the opportunity, right? It's, it's, it's an offer of love, an opportunity for true happiness, and often through sharing openly with someone or maybe many someones, if there's not someone in particular that you think this is revolving around for you. But let it be more than just an opportunity, right? These aces of cups, they're offerings, they're opportunities, but it's just a seed that has to be watered, as we always say, right? So let it be more than that. This, this reading, these cards are suggesting that you should by making an offer back to that person or to those people who you might find happiness in expressing openly to, right? In sharing with. And then the last card out, the more distant future. So moving toward the end of November 2019 or even into December, as we said, is the Ten of Fire. The Ten of Spears in this deck. A feeling of being overwhelmed, burdened, having too much on your plate. And the bottom of the deck is the Nine of Chalices nine of water talking often about self-love satisfaction contentment i'm getting some messages let me pause this for just one minute so yeah there are quite a few different messages coming coming through here in the reading for you as well um i want to want to draw at least one clarifier here on this fool card in the recent past this new adventure which i think was scary to embark upon this mysterious unknown path ahead um doing something going somewhere where um you had never been or or, or doing something that you had never done embarking on the uh, unfamiliar scared but excited um fearful but intrigued Maybe a little naive about certain things when we see the full card. Um, just certainly uninformed, inexperienced, not practiced at, at, at something that was ahead on the path. Maybe some, some mystic energy here, of course, with the full card. Interesting, another ace. So one, one is on the table. And if you think of the magician as a, a one as well, one, one, one is on the table. Definitely speaking to me of the fact that um, your, your thoughts are manifesting pretty quickly, really readily at this time. And that makes absolute sense. I have a lot of physical confirmation about the direction the reading's going. And that absolutely makes sense with the magician being, again, the master manifester, someone who has all of the tools to manifest what they see fit or what they are working on currently. Um, It also does carry the energy of a traditional magician, someone who shows the crowd one thing while they're actually doing something else uh, behind the back, behind their back or behind the scenes, right? Um, the Ace of Pentacles is what has turned up for the clarifier. This is the Radiant Rider Weight Tarot deck, by the way. This is what has shown up as our clarifier on this full card. So if, you know, like I said, that's what that's how 111 jives with me, um, that your thoughts are, are, are rapidly manifesting. It's, it's, it's very quick, um, the transition from you, you had this idea, you had this thought to it's very real in front of you. Um, but otherwise, for you, 11 or 111 just may be particularly significant in some way that's unique to you around this time, or if you want to look into the meanings of the master number 11 or 111, they may just hold an additional message to tag on to this reading for you. It's interesting that we got that other ace, though. Um, it makes absolute sense. I mean, we've got a new beginning, a new beginning, and a new beginning on the table, right? Um, and we're using two different decks and we're, and we're using both the major arcana and minor arcana of one of them. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty, it's piecing together pretty fittingly here. In the recent past, this felt like an earthly opportunity to you. 
this brand new beginning. It was a, an adventure you went on not only because it was mysterious and intriguing, but even though you were afraid, it looked like it offered you um, wealth and subsequently health, right? Your health is your wealth. Um, so it offered you an opportunity to improve your health and or wealth. Something like moving somewhere, getting a new job, getting a raise, et cetera, et cetera. We know the basic examples, right? But just something that improved your physical wellness, your physical environment, your physical world that uh, was really an offer from the divine. And you were viewing it as an oper a, a physical, monetary, um, physical resource type of opportunity. You were going on this adventure, I think, because of what it offered you in terms of wealth, in terms of physical well-being again. And I think because it is something, this this path, this road, this choice, going down this, this new fresh beginning, this new, um, on this new adventure, I think because it was brand new to you, because it was totally foreign, um, and, and, and like we said, a little frightening because of that foreign and frightening, I think because it was foreign and frightening to you, I think that's why you stepped into this magician's energy, which, so some of you may not realize that you do have all of the tools to manifest what you want and Aquarians, obviously what you want more than anything is to live authentically, to walk that path authentically, to express authentically. And you may just need reminded of that. That seems so out of character for us, right? But that uh, that you may just need reminded of that at this time, Aquarians, because I think that because everything was brand new to you, whether you realize it or not, you've started to show the crowd one thing, but do something behind your back or behind the scenes that's that's different that they can't see. And there's a, there's this is where the message starts breaking off. Um, for some of you, whatever you're working on, you're advised to notice that it is not only a physical opportunity. It's not only an opportunity to in improve your physical well-being, um, health, wealth, status, environment, etc. But it's also an emotional new beginning, an emotional offer for you. And if you accept that, um, you can share openly and authentically the way you truly want to with those you are sharing your work with, which would mean, from what I'm seeing, allowing them to see more of the truth of your process, allowing them to see more of what is going on behind the scenes, behind your back, more of what is going on that you're keeping from them right now. Um, reveal the trick. Just be open, be honest. It's what you want. It's an opportunity for true happiness. And... In doing so, in the near future, as I said, I think your thoughts are, are manifesting pretty quickly into reality. Um, in the near future, you will attract kindred spirits and like-minded individuals. Individuals and situations that can continue to evolve you and enlighten you. And, and besides living authentically, Aquarians, what else are we going for, right? Evolution, authenticity. It just, it looks so good. It looks so good, but, but we, you have to open up <laughs> you have to share more of your process, more of what you're doing behind the scenes. Now that's if it's, if it's in relation to work, like I said, it branches off here. If this is a new emotional opportunity that is coming your way, like a new crush, a new love, or again, Mercury retrograde, maybe a renewed crush or love at this time, right? That's popping up coming into your life around the same time um, as this physical opportunity and this other new adventure that may be a separate matter, right? Uh, then, then again, you may be keeping on a brave face because you can sort of sense that this person may come in very quickly, but then also leave very quickly. They may just be this free-spirited type of person who's very attracted to you, um, or I'm sorry, that you're very attracted to, Um um, and, 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 you know, that's attractive to, to so many people that, that, um, they have their own goals. They have what fuels their fire aside from you, um, or aside from any romantic interest, right? And they have somewhere they're headed and they have things they have to do. So they may be with one person doing a certain thing in a certain area for a certain amount of time, but they can't be faulted for then heading somewhere else or towards someone or something else. 
um, engaging in something else because that is their very nature. And that sort of fleeting but focused on what matters to them energy is what's drawing you in. It is what's very attractive to you. Um, but you may not be wrong uh, about the fact that they would come in very quickly and leave very quickly. And that may be the question that you need to ask yourself. Are you okay with having that type of experience with them? If not, um, then you really need to in listen to your intuition and analyze the the subtle and blatant signs coming from this person and their energy, right? Uh, in order to determine if they're someone who might stick around or not. If you're not okay with a flash in the pan type of fling or romance or experience with someone. Um, it, I think it's great if it's um, someone you're working with, but again, that's your choice. You may be in a situation where no, you want a partner who's gonna invest in your business or your uh, whatever you're working on your project with you and is not going to take off same scenario you still you need to ask then what you're ready for and if the answer is that you don't want something quick in and out then really analyze again the subtle and blatant signs that would and, and maybe just ask this person outright right um, but also analyze the signs to see if you can get that from them because it does we do have a burden here in the outcome of the situation I'm saying outcome the more distant future like we said the end of November moving into December there is a burden that you're carrying and on your own now, if it's just something that you've been working on, this is the completion of that cycle. It is the, the completion of a spiritual journey, maybe specifically a creative and spiritual journey for a lot of you, uh, something that you're very passionate about, if nothing else, your own self-development, right? Um, especially for Aquarians, that is fitting again. Not that other signs don't want to develop. It's just that evolution uh, really drives us. Authenticity and evolution really drives us. There is an indication with, with the Seven of Swords here reversed on the bottom of the Clarifier deck that you aren't exactly acting like yourself, feeling like yourself, or you are to some extent out acting out of character. So whether you're putting on a brave face for your audience or putting on a brave face for someone that is a crush or a love interest, right? You're not showing them how you really feel. You're not truly opening up. You're not letting... Um, all of the behind the scenes show, and that's what you're advised to do. Make an offer, be honest, um, be open, not necessarily with everyone about everything. You do not owe your whole truth to anyone, but just in a way that makes you feel like you are doing this work or, or uh, releasing this expression of emotion towards someone authentically, in an authentic way that truly represents who you really are, what you really want. Now, if you're pretending to someone like you don't want something long term because you don't think that that's what they want, you need to be honest, at least with yourself, about what you want. And I would say from the reading, be honest with them about what you want. And it may not be the news that you want to hear. You may not be able to box them in to make them change or want you for the same amount of time or in the same way at this time, right? That, that, that might be the answer to the question, but you're the one who ends up walking alone, carrying the heavy burden here in a couple few weeks. Um, so, so I think the path that you're on now uh, leads to that burden because you're not being honest uh, about who you are and what you want with someone. Um, so it can lead to, to great success, fulfillment, and completion if it's, if it's you opening up with an audience, opening up with those you are doing a certain type of work for. Um, it's definitely going to lead to a certain type of leveling up if it, this is a romantic situation for you, if that's the way this plays out. By offering your truth, offering your emotion, get it out, let them know how you feel, what you want, what you see. And, and if the truth of the matter is that, they, like I said, they just can't stick around long enough to, to do that with you, let them speak that truth um, or, or show you that truth if they are not going to speak it right and accept it. And acceptance can change the nature of things. So, you know, I'm not trying to tell you how to get this person, but to an individual like that, you being very accepting of the fact that hey, I just am a different type of person than you are. I just see you differently than you see me. I just want something different. You don't? Okay, that's fine. I understand. You being that mature, understanding, 
respectful can absolutely instantaneously shift the way that they feel about you. Does that mean it's going to shift to, to you getting exactly what you're daydreaming about, what you want? No, but they will have a new warmth, a new intensity, a new draw towards you for you to be that confident and comfortable owning your truth, sharing your truth, and at the same time, entirely accepting and respectful of them and their truth, wow, of course that's going to escalate, elevate their admiration toward at least, um, respect toward you at least, if not their affection toward you. When I'm met with that, when I'm met with someone who's, who's um, and, and can't you say the same about yourself, when I'm met with someone who is completely unfazed in sharing their deep feelings, but then doesn't feel pushy if I don't return them, it absolutely makes me feel this wave uh, of affection for them. Like, wow, you're, you're just, you're, you're very healthy and, and respectful. And maybe I need to look again, right? Um, that can absolutely shift it. Whereas if you are pouty, if you are pushing them away because of that, if you are mad, if you are, um, you know, just making it, making it obvious that you're carrying a burden to them, right? You know, they may feel like, so what, you can't have, you can't have all of me, so you don't even want my friendship. Right now, this again is specific for those of you who are looking at this and more in a romantic way, but you may be able to apply that to what I was saying about your audience as well, if we're talking about what you're working on for, for other people. Um, so that, so the opposite reaction, right? Not being accepting, respectful, even just being a little bit childish and pouty, right? Can, can make them shift in the other direction. Like, well, I obviously made the right choice, right? That's what it shows to me when people do that. Well, you, you have some growing to do. You, you really can't get upset at someone for what they feel or don't feel, right? That's just very childish and immature and it's, it's disrespectful, um, and then they don't feel validated. They don't, they don't feel accepted by you. So why would why would their emotions shift in a positive way towards you? It's going to shift either in a negative way or at least in a way where they think, well, we just don't need to be spending so much time together anyway, right? So this is what this is what I see. This is what I see. Um, I do see you ultimately walking alone and, and and carrying the burden because even if you are entirely respectful and accepting. Uh, of someone not being able to continue to to be with you, whether you whether you choose to to go ahead with this passionate, quick flash in the pan fling or not, which is entirely a personal choice. You know, are you going to get what you want from them in that? Are you going to? Um, is that it's completely personal choice? Is that experience worth it to you? Do you or what do you think? Does your intuition and your thoughts tell you that? Um, you think it will be because, you know, you could be right or wrong about that as well. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I feel like pausing and saying a lot of these questions we can answer, answer in a personal reading, right? It's not that we can't know if they would stick around or not. It's not that we can't know um, even if you're, we're talking about romance or your work life here, right? We would just have to get a, a personal reading. You would have to get a personal reading or... And I don't know why I keep saying this this month. I mean, um, but it just keeps coming coming to me. Or you know, you can ask really quick yes and no questions on your own if you if you're into tarot. If you have a deck, I'm sure a lot of you do. Um, but yeah, it's not that we can't get down to the bottom of that. But it looks like ultimately, in general, for this general reading, you do come out walking alone and carrying a burden. So just because you play this right and are very accepting and mature about this situation not going your way, uh, doesn't mean that it's not still going to hurt when they when they kind of come and go, whether you engage in the fling or not, if that's the specific way that this applies to you. Um, so, you know, in situations like this in my past, when I have had a night of fire that I sensed very much was going to come and go, um, and this has been years ago, but I engaged. I thought, well, the experience is worth it. I know this probably isn't going where I wanted to go, but I'm going to be honest about how I feel and I'm going to see what happens. Um, it turned out, go figure, not even a year later, I was very happy that that didn't work out, right? I, it's not that I, that I hated the person or anything, but in getting to know them 
better, I realized that we weren't really a fit and that certainly wasn't what I wanted anyway. Um, in other instances like that, it may turn out that you're respectful and mature about being not getting what you want here. And uh, this ends up being a good friend who, who you know, you can return to because you had that mutual respect for one another. Uh, I still think you're advised to get this out, get it off your chest. What it looks like here in this instance, what is going to eat you up in the long run is not them saying, hey, you're great too, but I just am not going to stay here for very long. Or you're great too, but I'm just not that type of person. I just don't engage in serious long-term relationships that are monogamous or whatever the case is, right? Those are examples. But it looks like what's going to eat you up is not that they don't want the same thing you do, because ultimately that's just what people on this earth are. It takes all kinds and we'd be screwed if we didn't have all kinds. We have to keep that in mind all the time, right? As irritating as, as all kinds can be sometimes. Um, it takes all kinds. So that's just a fact of life. That's just a, the, um, a fact of this earth peopling, right? There's going to be different kinds. So ultimately, that's not what eats you up. Ultimately, what might eat you up is failing to even share the emotion, share the love, uh, share the truth, right? Express that. Um, so I think you're really advised to get it to get it out, get it off your chest. And if if it really seems ridiculous to share it with this particular person, if you're like, I already know that they're not going to feel the same way. There's no way that I'm going to make things weird um, just by by making this weird offer to them. That might be some of you. OK, then get it out to someone. It, it looks like that's what's going to eat you up is never getting it out, never getting it off your chest. And for most of you, though, I do think it's not taking your chance. Take your stab at it. Take your chance at it. Put it out there on the table. And then maybe in months or years to come, they come back around. You, you never know. So you do, you want to get that off your chest. You want to get that out. I'm telling you right now, that's, that's what's going to eat you up. That's what you want. And maybe that genuine emotional connection between you and this, this other person, if it is just one other person, is, is what then really... Um, secures the friendship long term or really secures the fact that like I said they may come back around and by then maybe this is not what you want or you have someone else or or who knows again personal readings we will I will look that that deep into the future with you in a personal reading um but I will always remind you that there the longer the time is between when you do the reading and when the events may occur the more opportunities for free will and other circumstances to change uh, there is for the, those things to change the path that you're on, right? There, there's more opportunity for that path to shift then. So it, that's why it's, it's better to do these monthly readings um, six months ahead, maybe a year. But, but we can absolutely get into it. We can absolutely dig down into it. I think it's, it's pretty much split here. So, so I've talked way more about the romantic scenario here. So I hope you could apply it uh, if this applies to your career, to your projects, to your work. Um, but but it's pretty much split between those two. If it's if if it is related to your work and your career, it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and this is about how you feel about you, how you feel about your expressions, whether there were expressions in work or expressions in love. This is about how you feel about your expressions. How do you feel about the fact that you're only showing part of it right now? Um, so don't take my word or the card's words for it. That, that is what it is about. This is about self-love, self-satisfaction, self-contentment. Are you satisfied with the amount of authenticity that's going into your expression toward this person you care so much about or this work that you care so much about? Um, and if it's about your work and career, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Just open up. Just open up. Just offer honestly. Offer from your heart space. Give it a chance. There's true happiness here. You may not realize what you have to offer. You may not realize all that you have to offer to this person or to these people that you share with. You may think, if I don't put this front up, if I don't present this, 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 this complete package and show while I'm actually still... Um, you know, doing some of the, the, the nuts and bolts works behind the scenes, then what am I even really offering? What do I have to show? Just because you don't see it take its shape, just because you don't see the full worth of it does not mean that someone else won't. 
it's 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 um it's dreamlike the offer to you is dreamlike it's not taking shape you can't exactly see what the point of that type of offer would be uh, and maybe you will see the point thereafter like the those who are receiving it will see the point when they when they receive it um I have to go back to the to the love portion of the reading specifically again. This night of of fire here, though that though they are someone who it who moves very quickly, who may not want to settle down just now or ever, who may be in and out of of romantic situations. It doesn't mean that like all people, they don't need to hear how they are loved, how they are appreciated, what they are worth to you. It doesn't mean that it won't mean as much to them. Um, and I'm not asking you to sacrifice and lay down for someone who who you feel would use or abuse you. That's not what we're saying. If if that's something that they do um, in in a shitty manner, then no, you don't you don't need to to be used. No, but if you truly care about this individual, and the truth is that you're just in different places in your life, or you're just different type of people. Why not let them know what they mean to someone anyway? Why not let them know how they've influenced you, how they've inspired you, how you admire them, uh, what they stir in you? That still could be vital to their um, vibration to hear, to receive from someone just because they're a different type of person or just because right now isn't your all's time, right? I know if you are in a, interested in someone that's not what you want to hear, uh, but but you also may really enjoy that quick experience with them. It could enlighten you both. Uh, it could it could sec secure you to, um, like I said, continuing to know each other for a time. Uh, the, again, but but everybody's different. You know, every you all are are different than me. It's everybody's different. So it depends on what your limitations are, um, what you like your friendships to look like, if that's what it's ultimately going to be, right? And. Um, and again, the main question is, are you happy and content and satisfied and proud of the amount of authenticity that you are able to put into your expressions, your expressions of love, your expressions in work? Because this cycle is coming to a close. Whatever you decide here, this cycle is closing. It's the end of a spiritual journey. How will you finish it out? How will you finish it out? Are you happy with the amount of authenticity that is there with how much of you is, is in this expression from you? So again, check out 11, check out 111 if you need additional messages here. If you're interested in ordering a personal reading from me, all that information is down below as well. There's links there, an email address, et cetera, et cetera. I love you, Aquas, and I hope that you make the most of the remainder of November 2019. And I truly look forward to doing another reading for us just as soon as I can.